I saw this video on Jinjin's channel. This is an old video. It was posted three years ago. The actual original video might be even a little bit older than that. It is a um, video streamed conversation between Flash and Nada. If you've only been a StarCraft 1 fan since um, ASL, you might not really know who Nada is. Nada was basically the first Terran to move us into the macro phase of StarCraft, where it really came down to like never missing depots, knowing how to get your third base right away, powering up, not necessarily always winning on tactics, although obviously all players were still doing that, some more than others, but he was a very early on legend in StarCraft 1. He did come and play a little bit of StarCraft 2 in the early days. Uh, he actually lived near Artosis, so Artosis would bump into him at the grocery store whenever uh, he'd be with his family getting food. Um, but he did come back to StarCraft 1 a couple years ago and was playing. This is when Flash was basically at his peak as far as StarCraft 1 performance. I have this part of the video muted just because I don't want to get copyright struck. But I think we're going to get in the conversation right now. So I was watching this the other day. I thought this was really interesting. And I think content like this is what is going to make more good StarCraft players. Uh, so we're going to go through their brief conversation. It's about 15 minutes long. And um, it's really interesting to see two of the best players of all time from different eras talking about how they look at and understand the game. Hmm. So, this era that they're in, what they're talking about, they were talking about ASL season, season 7 onward. Um, I think this might have even been a, a few seasons later when this video of them was recorded. But uh, this is when Nexus first was extremely common, extremely busted. And it wasn't like there was just one Nexus first build which was causing a lot of problems for Terrence. There was Nexus first um, one gate, Nexus first two gates. There was Gateway Forge. Uh, and also this was simultaneously at the same time the uh, Zealot on 14 opening. So that's where you'd get your, your Gateway, Gas, Cybernetics Core, and then make one Zealot. So you'd cut one to two probes in the build, but you'd have the ability to create a threat on the map. So it was this really tough balancing act for Terran players to know... Uh, are, they, are they getting that early Zealot Dragoon aggro play? And how do they play against it? Or is it going to be the really greedy Nexus first? Because they require very different uh, reactions. So at this moment, he's talking about when he scouts, he needs to check... With the way he's playing it is he scouts early and tries to find the gateway so he can confirm if a zealot comes out or a dragoon comes out or not. So this is the N scout, what they're talking about. I've heard it also called Z scout. If you watch um, Artosis and me when we cast, we call it cross-spawn scout. But the idea is that you're basically not going in a circular pattern to scout with that. So what happens is, is you're trying to confirm, are they cross-spawns? In other words, are they really far away from me or not? I was just recently in a cast complaining about how I didn't understand this at times because what happens if you scout him last? Now watch what Flash teaches Nada here. 
어, 치즈도 있는데 더 중요한 게 식사제를 많이 하잖아요. 그러니까 일, 예를 들어서 1시를 갔으면 제가 11시고 1시를 갔어요. 그럼 7시로 엔사 서치를 하면 그 입구에서 진로시 딱 만나요. 아 그래서 제가 이제 대각은 안 무섭잖아요. 어. 그러니까 이제 So the idea here is that he while he won't get to the gateway in time to see the uh, the zealot coming out if he follows that scouting path he'll always find it on the way to his base and so this is a really different idea than what nada would do which is just try to scout early and try to find the gateway uh instead he has flashes his totally different method for um moving out and here let, let him go on <laughs> So in this concept, if Flash sees an early worker, that alone prompts him to completely change the build. Because it would not be a Nexus first, if that was the case. And this is, I think, he'll talk a little bit more about it, but it's these ideas that come from Flash that give him this pretty crazy edge where he understands all the advantages and disadvantages of each build. And then he knows how to basically sidestep it with his own build. So he's usually not in a bad po a position where even for a lot of good players, it can be kind of a confusing, dark, mysterious place. Uh, you know, build orders or, you know, th this scout comes here. What does this mean? Because a lot of players get tunnel vision into it from their own perspective. He sees what I'm doing. I'm trying to do this. But even seeing a move like this where the worker comes really early, so you know, you, in that case, it's not a threat of a greedy macro game. You might as well just react as if you're going to be hit early. Called the cheesy rush. Um, so they're talking about his um, Marine SCV rushes. So I think when we were at peak Nexus first openings, and by the way, it's still used, like even in this season of ASL, we'll see Nexus first. It's never going to go away fully. Um, but it was like everybody was going for this really quick uh, Nexus play, and Flash was one of the few players that was actually. Anytime he went for the Marine SCV rush, he would win. But if you'd watch a lot of other players who would play, uh, you would have these situations where like it would just totally backfire and the, the tear in the rush would look like an idiot. So that's what they're talking about here. Yeah, I'm going to say that. So, I'm going to say that. 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 I'm going to so it's kind of an older idea from Nada. I remember, I feel like a lot of players back then kind of had that idea. So he would scout later two SCVs in one direction, a Marine in another. So that way he's mined more resources and can scout at the last possible second. But it is a little bit more primitive than what, what Flash is talking about here. So let me talk about that because that might be confusing if you just read that. This was a hard concept, I think, for a lot of people to understand. Um, so Nexus First was so strong 
because first of all, if you got away with it, you're like way ahead, right? But let's say that you get rushed. The really smart players, if they realized, you know, this is going to be a, a serious rush, they probably can't afford to fight. They would just pull all the probes off their off their natural, run up the ramp, um, and defend at the ramp, and give up the nexus. And I think one would initially think, looking at that, okay, well, this means that the Terran's ahead. But you got to remember, the Terran has to pull SCVs during the rush, so those SCVs aren't mining. So you have workers not mining, plus the travel time, plus potentially workers that could have been killed or or kited during that fight. So. There are games, and especially back then, I remember even I would mess with Nexus first a little bit. There'd be games where you would get rushed, give up the Nexus, and still be a little bit ahead. Play off one base, they have to send everything back, they have to play off one base. And that's what they're talking about here. Oh, I think I missed something. So, Nada also mentioned about uh, Flash knows when to attack and kill the Nexus, or when to run up the ramp. So that was another confusing thing. Do you want to just try to target down the Nexus and kill it, or do you want to just go for the jugular and actually try to kill them, but risk overextending, um, getting killed by, you know, Zealots, maybe one Dragoon, a probe in the main, and they keep the Nexus, and then you're a thousand percent dead. And so what he says, Flash says, is, is what did he, I think it was six or seven shots? Yeah. Here, I'll go back a second. So he's saying, I can't believe you know how to, whether or not to go for the Nexus or to run up uh, and, and, and basically close the game out with the kill in the Protoss's main. So six or seven rain shots on the Zealot. Now, the way I, my brain works and probably a lot of other players' brains works is that like, the Zealot's tanky enough. It's always better to keep away from it with Marines. I think it's 36 shots from a Marine to kill a Zealot or something crazy like that. Um, but I guess Flash identifies if the initial Zealot is chipped enough, which oftentimes it is chipped a lot in that fight. Is it 33 hits? Thank you, Hugh, on YouTube. Thank you, Data Boy Shield. Uh, I love the FGC too, man. I got to get back into Street Fighter VI. Uh so he says if he does just that much damage, then that should be enough to allow him to accelerate the game into a win by going up the ramp. Even if you kill the Nexus, you aren't ahead. So this is what I was talking about. So he's about to unpack the variations that Protoss have for the for the Nexus first builds. The build is not like a monolith where you're just doing one thing. There's a whole bunch of different ranges of builds. And he knew this, I feel like, better than even a lot of the Protoss players did. So this is something I think a lot of people don't appreciate if they haven't played at a really high level. Um, just like in chess, you need to be able to play through a whole game in your head. I think people, this is where I, you know, I, I stopped once I really started to realize how much talk of APM became too much of a distraction from what the game actually was. Like if you tell people these guys have 300, 400 APM, they're like, whoa, they're so fast. This is such a fast, crazy game. But the reality is so much more of the game is just about knowing what your opponent can or can't do, having a decision tree that you can navigate that will allow you to come out uh, positionally on top or percentage-wise odds on top if you don't have all the information. And so they're talking about playing through games in their head, uh, heads and trying to figure out what to do next. Because 
I think especially back in the old days, there was this belief that the only way people improved was to basically be like a, a workhorse and just play games all the time. But I think at this point in time, we know that's not true. A lot of this is about um, kind of retaining a full understanding of where the game can go and what you need to do and what they can or can't do or should or should not do in those situations. And by the way, you guys can do this too. It won't be on the same level, but like even when um my brother and me would practice, obviously we were never as good as these guys, but like as top American players, we have a lot of time spent talking about what we think we should or should not do in situations or what was strong or weak um, or potential outcomes. And so you're seeing that here with these two guys. So he says they don't call him a genius for nothing because not to spend a lot of time just thinking um, about the game. But truly, if you're doing a certain amount of time just thinking about the game, that will help you in your overall play. Um, sorry. I'm not going to burp this video. Excuse me. Um, one other thing to note is that um, there are some players that need to practice way more than others. I think sometimes people believe that the best players are actually playing like, you know, 10 hours a day. Um, not always the case in StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2. Some people are extremely active and um, they don't see as much improvement. And some players don't play that much at all. Uh, and can come can come in and come back out and, and pick things up really quickly. And I think a lot of that is due to like uh, whether or not you built up the right mental structure to look at the game in a certain way and um, kind of process what's happening and pick up on the meta and the trends and the maps. Whoa, why did my lamp just get a lot brighter? <laughs> So that's so interesting. He he gets the vulture out, then count, then waits exactly two seconds and sends it. So it's going to come in and intercept that at like the exact right moment. It's crazy. 따라 틀리는데 이제 팩터블이면 무조건 가야 되잖아요. 원 게이트면 한 여섯 일곱 마리 적게 아니, 한 여섯 마리 꽤 가는구나. 네, 여섯 마리. 여섯 마리. 근데 이제 투기 투 게이트 생내기면 막 가난하니까 토스가 많이 나오잖아요. 어, 그렇지. 그럼 한 여덟 마리 데리고 가요. 여덟 마리. 네, 여덟 마리 데리고. 열한 마리는 오반에 그냥. 네. 그거는 불리하네. 어, 예. 어, 네. 네. 저는 그냥 그거면 그냥 본인까지 밀어야 된단 말이에요. 아, 그그 그, 그, 끌고 갈 때도 있어 그렇게? 아니요, 거의 없어요. 한 여덟 아, 마리. 여덟 마리. 네. 아무리 많이 데리고 가도 여덟 마리. 네, 여덟 네. 마리에서. 근데 예를 들어서 스폰을 하는데 일, 어. 첫 번째 게임을 하는데 어. 막혔어요 여덟 마리로. 어. 그럼 이제 그 다음 판에 열 마리. 그게 이제 중요한 생각이고 일단. 이거 다시는 못 하게 만드는 네. 것보다. 네. 그러면 토스는 잘 몰라요. 얘가 여덟 마리 열 마리 될거 잘 모르고 이게 안 되는 구라나고 생각을 하지 음... 잘 모르더라고. 그래서 네, so even with that, if it doesn't work in the first game, he'll just rotate in more SCVs for the second game. So this is. Uh, Here's why this is so important. Like, think of how good of a player Nada is and how many games he plays where he maybe wins even though he didn't have the opening down perfectly. Um, but games could have been ended outright had he known what Flash had known here. 확실히 더 확실히 주겠어요. 예. 
벌처 찍고 속으로 1, 2 근데 이게 랠리를 찍으면 네. 마린과 벌처의 동선이 겹쳐서 네. 이거 컨트롤 따로 해줘? 아, 네. 네. 벌처 한 번만 한 번만 한번 처음만 네. 아. 처음에 딱 걸, 걸치잖아요 그러니까 사마린하고 Wait, wait, I, I didn't even get that Hold on a second But when you make rally points d o n t Marines and Vultures spawn overlap and end up rallying slower Do you micro them spawning separately? So we, I think we've all seen this in games where like there's a Marine walking And it almost looks like it's pulling the vulture behind itself, <laughs> like it's a donkey or something. Um, and so he's wondering, like, okay, when you're having these fights, if the vulture is getting stuck, you know, how do you uh, make sure that doesn't happen? I just micro the first spawn since the first spawn tend to overlap in the round. <laughs> Only the first and fourth marine tend to get in each other's. way when spawning so i micro there so he's even mapped out when there could be traffic problems uh he knows which units that'll happen with and so he knows only when to go back there so this is like this is so crazy how much he knows a traffic pro sorry this not, i'm not the most articulate guy right now r e c l i n e i just woke up um but you know what i'm saying like he he knows when there's going to be like congestion with movement on the map and he knows when there won't be. So it's not even like he's just being like, you know, a, a 450 APM God. It's that he just knows when he needs to devote that APM to what and when he can just uh, zero in on a fight over at the Protoss's next is first. Yeah, they're just making clear this is an actual conversation. I mean, it's good content too, but this is not not a like pretending he doesn't know that and and you know, Flash looking smart. This is really knowledge being transferred from one great to another. So this is something I'm super interested in. I was obsessed with hotkey setups when I was like in college. Uh, when I started to realize that like having good keyboard inputs is so important. Keep in mind, um, Remastered had already been out. So like This is in remastered. You could you can change hotkeys. By the way, you still have to use the number keys at the top. I know a lot of you guys played StarCraft in the old days. You might not like be actively playing now, but you can rebind keys. Uh, you know, like let's say you use Z for Zealot. I have that changed. Um, no, actually, I do use Z for Zealot. I'll use like um, let's say F for the uh, attack upgrade. Um, stuff. Anyways, you can move keys around and make it more convenient. I use F for observers. Um, Z for Corsairs, uh, so a lot of it is just FZA for uh, stuff like that. You use a modified grid. Let's see what uh, Flash and, and Not have to say about it. We have to change that. Yeah. For example, I was in the comments that I was in the comments. Oh, really? He hockey to CC to two? Oh my god, I'm so triggered by this. That's crazy. I see my hotkeys is always zero and nine and eight, but I use probe for P. And then, so I have all my macro on the right side and everything else on the left side. But yeah, I know a lot of Terran players back then would use uh, five or six for, for the command center. S SCV is S, not P. But we're, we're talking about, um, you can rebind keys in remaster, guys. And, and SCV is not P, it's S. But the thing, but yeah, but probe is P. コメントあの既存アナログじゃない。画面自身もロボバコで。で、요즘에 스타2도 좀 일찍 넘어가서 좀 손해봤던 게 뭐냐면은 네. 그때 화면 지정이 없었었어 스타2에 아예요? 아예 없어가지고 Oh I didn't realize that Were there no screen hotkeys for StarCraft2 when it came out? That's so funny 
해서 뽑은 거예요. 네. 5, 6 번을. 네. 그래서 스타워도 다시 돌았을 때도 5 번이 됐었는데 네. 김성현이 6번 쓰더라고. 너 번에 몇 번? 저는 지정 안 해. 지정 안 하는구나. 그래서 네. 6, 5 번에서 6 번. He doesn't hockey is easy. That's crazy. I thought everybody that ever played the game hockeyed their command center, nexus, or hatchery. That's wild. That's. I guess I'll go up. But 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 I'll go Oh, but after my barracks are done, I don't use hockeys for CC at all. Oh, okay. All right. So I guess in like the first minute or two, he has that. But after that, he overlaps him. Got it. And so, Song Yun, 끝까지 쓰잖아요. 커맨드를 그 Song Yun의 LCB가 제일 많아요. 항상. 아, 그래서 나도 LCB가 많았고. 네. 나도 변형태랑 게임하는데 변형태가 네 발처럼 발처럼 읽고 다 잡았거든. 근데 인구수 차이가 안 나네요. 그런 거야. 맞아요, 맞아요. 이게 일꾼을 많이. Song Yun이가 왜냐 만지고 먹거든요. 번호로. 그게 뭐 웬만하면 장점이죠 제 생각에는 되게 큰 장점이 너는 예를 들어서 선행배 오배라고 한다 네. 그러면 너는 넘버링을 꽤나 오랫동안 유지하지 배럭이요? 어. 네 그러니까 저한 그러니까, 손으로 계속 뽑죠 그러니까 이게 중요한 네. 거야 왜냐면 네. 여기서 화면 지정을 Sorry, 꼭... I gotta slow this down Onzingan could pin to me Chocum Sanka. Then they get Salmons of Kesukas numbering and Boko in the Gazana. Then you get Hashin, Wishi, then they get Hansaka don't don't hesso. The Tasaka, they get the Ape put them signing as a popa than one day. Come the pump of the Ponkazi. So I do my racks hockeys from four to eight to produce out of my five racks. So four to eight. Also, keep in, si keep in mind, back then they were using the M key, so it was probably actually his pinky up on four and his M, his uh, index finger on M, and probably sliding that up the top. So I remember figuring out on my own. I'm gonna I'm gonna like gonna inject myself in, in between these two Terran gods here for a second. I remember when I figured out uh basically producing off of number keys. Like for me it's gateway four, five, six, seven. Uh I, I usually don't go past seven on that. But just being able to like use my pinky on D or Z, and just have the rest of my fingers uh, hit the other keys, it, it's so strong, especially in early game because you'll you'll never be late. You'll be so on top of everything. 한 일주일 동안 아침에 맨날 연습해서 바꿨는데 음. 이게 지금만 생각해 보면 엄청 유리한 것 같아. 팩도 그렇고 타이밍할 때 이게 물량이 달라요. 다르고 이게 화면으로 보면은 이게 무슨 차이냐면은 예약 생산을 하게 되거나 빈틈이 생겨서 이게 그 자원을 효율적으로 못 쓰는데 이거는 넘버링을 보면 정확하게 이게 루트가 있잖아. 어느 정도 생산 되겠구나 하면서 따로 뽑고 따로 뽑고 하는 게 맞아요. 자원을 정말 효율적으로 뽑고 물량이 많은 거거든요. 되게 유리해요. 저그냥 할때 되게 유리해요. 성현이는 제가 이거 F4로 뽑는 걸로 알고 형, 형 성현이는 알고. 정확하게 내가 아는데 네. 배럭이 세 개까지는 넘버링을 뽑아. 네 개부터 화면 지웠어. 네 개. 내가 딱 그렇게 하거든. 아 형도 딱 그냥 그냥 성현이 분이랑 그냥 그대로 복사했어. 아 그때 한번 배울 때. 그아 이제 말이 되는 게 성현이가 삼 배럭 테크를 좋아했어요. 어. 그래서 그랬구나. 그래서 그랬던 거 같아. 삼 배럭 테크를 좋아해. 세 개까지 넘버링을 로 하고 4 번부터는 화면으로 싹 바꾸고. 아... 근데 그것도 일리가 있는데 네. 뭐 대면은 그것도 편하겠지만 제일 베스트는 이거 같아. 나는 또 이게 아까 칭찬하다가 말했던 게그 패트전을 5 번까지. Yeah, that's 있어요. crazy to me. So I I remember a lot of people telling me like, what are the things about Flash when you watch him play? This is right when I moved to Korea, so this was 2008. Um, is that if just watch his scans. He's always scanning where the enemy's army is. He um he he takes full advantage in late game of scan. Where you, you, there are some good players, they'll just have a lot of scan banked up. And so the idea, if you just take a look at your keyboard, assuming you're in front of a computer watching this, you have ten possible hotkeys lining the top of the keyboard. He uses more than half of that just on scans in the late game. 
which means I guess one through four are probably just uh, for units. Maybe he overlaps the fifth one um, every once in a while for units there when he's trying to move his whole army. But this is wild. And that makes perfect sense because if you're scanning constantly, you will never get preempted by dropships. And in fact, a lot of times you can just drop where their drop is going to come or, or keep them intimidated and back. Oh, okay, so this is purely a team. So this is this crazy bluff game that's happening in TVT at high levels with scans. It's big brain stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching that. If you like this kind of content, let me know in the com uh, in the comments. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. See this shirt? That's me. You can get that at tasteofthreads.com along with some other cool stuff we have on my merch site. Feel free to always join me on my Twitch stream where I record this stuff live and have a good day. I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.